Hello, everyone. Welcome to another monitoring webinar. And uh, before we get started, just some housekeeping items. So if you have any technical difficulties throughout this presentation, for instance, if you can't hear or see the screen or hear me, um, please let me know. There's a little chat window on the GoToWebinar panel uh, that you can type in there. Also, if you have any questions or comments throughout the webinar, feel free to also add those to the chat window and I'll answer those questions as we go through the webinar. So this webinar will be recorded and the recording will be shared out with all of you and um, at a, probably in a day or two. And then after that, if any of your colleagues or um, coworkers want to view the webinar, they can also go and find it on the Trimble Geospatial webinars page. Cool. So with that, I think we'll get started. I'll just make sure I haven't got any technical difficulty mes messages yet. Doesn't look like it. Perfect. Okay. So with that, let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about everything semi-automated monitoring or, or what is commonly known as campaign-based monitoring. And with that, we're going to talk about how Trimble Access and Trimble Business Center monitoring are the perfect pair for that application. So just to introduce myself, my name is Riley Smith. I'm Product Marketing Manager for the Trimble Monitoring Team. And I am based in Westminster, Colorado in the United States. And I'm I'm surveyor by trade, um, but I have been at Trimble for several years now, working in our geospatial group. Uh, excited to present to everyone today. So on the agenda, we're going to first talk about Trimble monitoring. What what is Trimble monitoring? What does the group do? And and what kind of technologies are are we working on? And then we're going to get into semi-automated monitoring and look at Trimble Access, TBC, what kind of applications and industries you would use those for, how do they benefit them. And then we're actually going to dive deeper into to things that we're working on with Trimble Access and TBC, making the, the monitoring workflows better and giving more tools to, to those of you out there who are doing this type of monitoring. And then after that, we're going to get into a live demonstration of the features. And of course, we'll save some time for Q&A at the end, um, but feel free. You don't have to save those questions for the end. You can always ask them during the webinar. Perfect. So let's start off with the Trimble monitoring overview. So we're all about automating movement detection. So monitoring is a word that's used quite often all around various industries, but we're really all focused on movement detection and taking those various sensor data, whether it's a geotechnical or a geospatial sensor, combining those technologies together to automate the movement detection on construction, infrastructure, and, and all sorts of large asset lifecycle projects. The Trim Monitoring Group has a long history and really started with those of you who are familiar with the geotometer, and, and that's where we started automating total stations, optical measurements, and then getting more and more in, over the past years into more, um, not just geospatial, but also geotechnical sensors. And we have many, many monitoring projects over that time period and, and currently running all across the globe. And those projects can range from single sensor, like a single total station, to several thousand sensors monitoring different aspects of, of sites and projects. And some of those projects have been running in continuous operation for, for 10, 15 years to really show the, the durability and the longevity of the, the, the hardware in the uh, optical sensors. In addition to that, Trimble, we work with our distribution partners all around the world. So anywhere where you are in the world, you can find a Trimble distributor to help support you locally, provide provide assistance on understanding what's the right tool for your monitoring project and helping you get it set up. And so the product family that Trimble Monitoring brings to the table on the left-hand side is, is more of our geotechnical portfolio, where we have a whole line of wireless geotechnical data loggers, as well as sensors like tilt 
and laser tilt meters. On the right hand side, we have more of the geospatial monitoring where we have our robotic and um, robotic total stations, high end total stations, as well as GNSS receivers. And then we combine all of that data into the middle, which you see, which is Trimble 40 control, where the, the brunt of all, all of the processing, the analytics, the visuals, the alarming, the reporting, that is all combined from all of that data in T4D. This is really the automated monitoring family. But what I want to talk about today is more semi-automated, which a lot of the a lot of you out there today are probably doing this on various projects, um, whether they're a survey or construction project is very often a, a workflow. So what are the difference between those two things? So on the left-hand side, more of the semi-automated workflow where I, I call it the tripod workflow. You're, you're continually visiting site, a site, whether that's once a day, once a week, once a month, and you're collecting data. Whether that's with a total station, maybe it's with a, with a, a digital level or a GNSS, and that sensor is typically not fixed on site, so it's not living on site. So that's why I call it the tripod method. You're bringing in your tripod, your instrument, and you're setting it up and, and measuring data. And you're typically looking for slow, uh, um, imperceptible movement. And, and there's typically low risk to safety or, or anything for, for the movement that you expect. The idea is to develop trends over a long period of time from that data capture. And because of that, you're usually not managing um, gigabytes worth of data. It's usually smaller data sets um, and doing a lot of the processing and reporting locally um, in the office as you collect that data. Now, as those project requirements increase for mon various monitoring applications, you get more and more uh, effective with an automated system where your sensor is permanently installed on site, like you see on the right hand side, and you can automate the data capture so no one is actually needed to go to site to capture the data, as well as the processing and alarming. So as soon as that data is captured, it is processed, whether you want to do a complex network adjustment or least squares adjustment, that is all done in real time. And then it can be set up to visualize in real time as well as create alarms and reports. And typically automated, fully automated is needed in more time sensitive movement detection where where you're looking for um, near real time movements so you can make better decisions about this public safety and, and project um, project requirements. So today we're going to be focusing on semi automated and what we're do what we're doing with Trimble Access and TBC is is to bring better and more efficient workflows, which is why we call it semi automated to existing campaign type monitoring scenarios. So you might not be doing a fully automated system. You might still be using your existing equipment, your, your Trimble S7 or, or your R, R12 receiver and Trimble Access, but bringing workflows that ha speed up that process and remove some of those pain points. So some of the common applications that, that semi-automated monitoring it can really benefit is especially short-term construction where you have to monitor some type of activity on site, whether maybe that's a pile installation or maybe it's a, a deep excavation or a shoring structure where you need to monitor that during the, the cycle of the construction project. So it's not a long term, so it might not be cost effective to install a fully automated system. Um, so a semi-automated might be more applicable there um, because there might be already surveyors on site collecting data and they can perform the monitoring as well. In the middle category, for more long-term projects where you're looking at trends and developing um, the, or getting data to develop trends over long periods of time, such as dams where you have maybe seasonal movement that you're looking at over long periods and other large structures. And then on the right-hand side, for, uh, for network control and verification. So in all, Oftentimes when you're setting up a control network or maybe you're just going out and verifying that network every so often, you have to perform a lot of rounds, a lot of measurements, uh, and probably to a lot of targets as well. And you want to speed up that process as, as fast as you can, both in the field and, and the office. So the system that we'll be talking about today for semi-automated 
semi-automated monitoring is probably really familiar to a lot of you. We have Trimble Access, which is the, the field software running with the total stations and the GNSS that's used to collect that data. And then we're going to go into the office on the Trimble Business Center side, where you bring all of that field data, you manage it, you do some QC, some processing, and generate some reports and visuals um, for your, your monitoring project from there. And in the middle, there's always the, the, uh, the, the way of transferring that data. There's more of a manual data transfer, maybe by USB, USB or email, um, but you can also use something like Trimble Sync Manager, which will automatically transfer over internet the data from the field to the office or the office to the field. On the campaign monitoring side, we're going to look at how, how does that look like for, for total stations, for example. So it starts by installing PRISM infrastructure on site. Usually you have some, some control points, and those are the, the large circles that you see on, on the screen here. And then you have some monitoring points that are installed on the key areas you're looking for movement. So here on the left-hand side, maybe I'm looking at movement. In that, ex in that excavation trench and making sure that the walls aren't moving at all. And on that building, maybe I want to see if that building is moving at all due to the surrounding construction activities and ensuring the structural integrity. So you would use a total station such as a, an S7 or S9 total station with Trimble Access to collect that data in an efficient manner. And then you would synchronize that data to Trimble Business Center in the office and create your, your deliverables. Now you might be using GNSS, whether that's static or maybe RTK GNSS, or maybe you have a, a base unit or maybe you have multiple roving units that you need to collect measurements on distinct points. Maybe the movement you expect isn't high accuracy or small level, so GNSS is, is a more cost-effective and fast solution to do that. And the same workflow applies. You would collect the data with Trimble Access in your, your GNSS receiver, and you would synchronize that to Trimble Business Center and create your reports and deliverables. And the same can be said with leveling. So if you're using a digital level such as the Trimble Dini, you can go out on site. If you have some benchmarks or you have some key points that you're looking for settlement in, you can collect that data, do your various level loops, and then you can bring that back all into Trimble Business Center. And same thing, you can generate your reports and your deliverables. And the key point here is all this data can be combined. So if you're working on a large construction site where you have multiple different sensors collecting um, different monitoring data, so maybe using total station, GNSS, and, and precise leveling all on one project, you can bring all of that data in TBC and generate monitoring deliverables from it. So let's look a little bit more at the software side. So we're going to get into live demonstration of this, but we want to cover, for those of you who aren't familiar with Trimble Access or, or the monitoring application, what that's all about. So, so the Trimble Access monitoring app is, it runs, if you're familiar with the, the, the standard Trimble Access app, the monitoring app is, in a, is a, a separate application. looks very similar, but it focuses on efficient data collection using total stations for monitoring projects. So the idea is you have multiple targets, multiple backsites, and you want to efficiently collect that data. You want to remove the need to do manual pointing and, and let the total station do the work. So you program in all of your site setup information and then tell the total station how many rounds, how many sets do you need to make, and it will do all that work for you. And the really important part is as it's collecting data, you're getting feedback in real time if there's any movement. So things like those short-term construction projects where maybe you are looking for movement while they're drilling that pile, this is a really efficient way to do that is you can let Trimble Access run and it will tell you when it, it finds movement out of your set tolerances. You can also use Trimble Access to do site setups for more automated monitoring. So for example, you're setting up an automated monitoring network and you wanna do your initial network adjustment, measure all of your targets, make sure everything's good. Once you do that, then you can pass from Trimble Access to Trimble 4D Control, and the total station will take over and do the automated network. And of course, as you collect that data, you can build some basic reports, basic analysis while you're in the, in the field in Trimble Access to show displacements and movement trends. But for more comprehensive, more customizable reporting and analysis, 
you can integrate that and move that data to Trimble Business Center. All right, on that TBC side of things, so Trimble Business Center is the, the, the survey office software, and we have a monitoring module in that in that uh, in TBC, and it's all about taking repeated data sets over time and managing it and being able to see those data sets. So seeing the trends, seeing the displacement vectors as you're getting more and more data from site and being able to make decisions from that. You can also set tolerances and flag points that have moved over significant um, have moved significantly. So, for instance, if I uh, I measure today and I notice that the wall is is moving, TBC will show me the where that movement is occurring, and what the level is, and if that falls out of my threshold. And then, of course, you can generate different deliverables, charts, reports, scatter plots, and a variety of other types of, of monitoring reports. So what, what we wanted to do today is, is focus on, on some of the things that we're working on to improve the workflow for semi-automated monitoring. I'm just going to check the questions before I, I move on here. Make sure if there's any important things that have come up. One moment, everyone. Looks like there was some. Uh, question asked, do you have monitoring with the Trimble SX10? So uh, you can use the Trimble SX10 with Trimble Access monitoring. Um, you can use it for automating the total station rounds. You can also perform scans, and you can take multiple scans um, that you've made with the SX10, bring them into TBC, and you can do, for instance, um, uh, scan to scan or service to service comparisons and see the heat map of the deviations on on the structure. So yes, that that is possible. It doesn't look like there's any other questions, so we'll keep moving on. Thank you for that question. All right. So what are we working on today? You know, with Trimble Access monitoring, we're working on um, some really cool things. One of my favorite is a alignment based report. What this does is it, instead of looking at displacements and a movement in coordinate terms, like northing, easting, elevation, you're looking at movement relative to an alignment, relative to a path. So for example, I have a bridge, a road, a railway, and I have an alignment file, maybe that's a design file um, that, I've, that I've got from an engineering team or someone, I can report relative to that alignment, so in station, offset, and vertical terms instead of coordinate. So really powerful and, and a really great feature that we're working on Trimble Access. Now, what we also have done is streamlined the data flow from Trimble Access to TBC. Now, if you've been using TBC monitoring, Trimble Access monitoring uh, in the past, you know that typically you would bring in each epoch of data into TBC, you would do some, some processing and you would create some reports and you would sync that. What we've done is we've created a new format that automatically brings all of the round data into TBC, automatically creates that, a monitoring um, project and shows all the displacements. And, and that's something I'll demonstrate today. And now the second one, which is, is also really interesting, is the automatic upload to Trimble Connect. So if you're using Trimble 4D Control, um, for automated monitoring, but let's say on your project you also have to supplement with semi-automated monitoring and you want to get that data into T4D as efficient as possible, you can use this workflow to have T4D pull data from a specific folder that's connected um, to Trimble Connect via a sync, the Connect Sync. And so what Trimble Access does is every time it measures around, it will automatically upload that data to a Trimble Connect project. So you have it there available in, in near real time. Now on the TBC monitoring side, the first and, and one of my favorite new tools is the Epoch Manager. And what this does is it allows you to see all of your monitoring data in one, one nice clean view in TBC. So if you have 100 epochs or, or a ton of monitoring data, you can, you can open up this view in TBC and it'll show all of the monitoring points but it will also give you some tools for better managing that data. For instance, you can change your reference or your, your baseline epoch where all of your displacements are calculated from. You can also delete single or multiple epochs. So if you found that there's some bad data or data that you just don't need, you can delete those. 
You can also change timestamps. For instance, if you made a mistake and, and entered the wrong timestamp time stamp for an epoch, you can change that as well. So there's a lot of really, uh, really uh, efficient management tools inside of this epoch manager. Now, in addition to that, um, as I mentioned before, we'll, we support this new import from Trimble Access Monitoring, which automatically creates, as you can see in this video, will automatically create all of the monitoring project data from Trimble Access and automatically show you the displacements. And you basically are ready to create reports in, in, um, in very short time. So it drastically reduces the time to set up a monitoring project in TBC. Now, the last one, and also a really cool one, is the customizable monitoring report. So if you've used TBC in the past, we have a great monitoring report, um, but oftentimes you might only need certain parts of that report, or maybe you only need certain points or a certain time series. So we've created a new command that allows you to pick and choose different aspects of the report and, and customize it to you to what you need. And of course, we've added the option to change the header image so you can add something like a company logo to the report as well. All right, so today what we're gonna show, we're gonna cover the whole workflow and inside of that workflow, we're gonna cover some of the new things that we've been working on. So we're gonna start in the Trimble Access side. As you can see behind me, I have a total station. So we're gonna do some monitoring with that. We're going to set up the, the different tolerances and options. We're going to measure rounds. We're going to generate one of those alignment-based reports to show you the, the displacements. And then we're going to export it to TBC. And on the TBC side, we're going to import that data into a new project. And it's going to automatically create us a, a new monitoring project. We're going to manage and edit that data using the Epoch Manager tool and show how you can manipulate the data as you need. We're going to visualize it in both 2D and 3D ways and then generate a customizable report. All right, with that, I'm just going, before we get into the demo, I'm going to see if there's any questions that popped up. Uh, another good question uh, about the availability of video tutorials. So yes, there are video t tutorials for both Trimble Access and TBC monitoring. So I suggest going to our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Trimble monitoring. And there's, there's multiple videos on both applications on how to do different workflows and different um, using the different tools in both Trimble Access and TBC. Thank you for the question. All right, I don't see any other questions, so let's keep going. So I'm gonna switch to, to the demonstration now. So let's start with Trimble Access. So, in Trimble Access, you can see we've got our, our uh, a project set up here. I'm connected to, to my total station behind me. I have a Trimble S7, and I've got some points defined here. We're just going to start a brand new job. So I'm gonna create a, a new job. We'll call it a webinar today, today's date, and we're gonna go. So we have a fresh job, we don't have any points, um, but let's say I'm revisiting the same monitoring site that I've been visiting oftentimes, and I've been and I've got my other job data. One thing you can do, instead of creating and measuring all the points again, is we can go to our site, and we can take all of that information from an existing job file. So I measured these points yesterday, so I'm gonna go here, and I can see all, what I what I measured, how many foresight points I have, and how many epochs I measured, and I'm gonna import all of that data. So that's gonna import all of the, um, the monitoring points. Oops, I might've missed, try that again. Oops, there we go. So there's all my, my points I imported. I've got my total station setup location. I've got my multiple back sites as well as my three monitoring points, which are called MP. So I brought all that data that's from a previous previous visit to the monitoring project. So that's an efficient way to, to bring in your, your data and start measuring right away. So the first thing to do is you wanna make sure you have your options set up. So this is key because it defines how the total station is gonna measure and, and how often, for example. So the epoch start time lets you define different um, 
the interval at which you're going to measure. If I set the idle time to zero, that means as soon as my one round is done, it's going to start the next round. So I could set that to a different value. For instance, if I needed to measure as they're installing a pile, I need to measure every 15 minutes, I would set that to 15 minutes. And every 15 minutes, the total station would, would, um, would complete another round. Where the interval time is different is it's based on the total time it takes the total station to measure. So if you want to complete around, around every 20 minutes, that interval time would let you define that. Now the next part is the face order. So this lets you choose whether you're doing face one, face two, um, or, or you're doing, um, doing face one first in all of the, all the rounds and then doing phase two, or you're doing phase one, phase two on every point before you go to the next one. So you can define all of that here. Just for, for the sake of the webinar, because we want to save some time and not take too long to do monitoring, I'm going to put it in phase one, but you could do phase one, phase two. For the, so the number of measurements and number of rounds, this is essentially how many sets you're, you're performing on each point. So number of measurements, I'm going to perform one face only measurement per round, but I could have multiples. If I wanted to have three measurements or I wanted to have three rounds, I could have all of that set up there. For time's sake, we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it short for now. And then there's a variety of settings for for how the measure the the instrument measures. So things like uh, skipping obstructed force sites, which can be very useful if you have multiple back sites. And if you only miss one, it's not a big deal. This will allow you to skip that and continue on with the monitoring. There's also an option to repeat missing targets. For example, maybe a, maybe a vehicle parks in front of your, your measuring line of sight between the target and the total station. What this will do is it'll, it'll try to measure and if it hits the vehicle, can't find it, it will go on, continue the round, and it'll repeat at the end of the round for any targets that were missed. Now, one of the new options is this auto upload each epoch. And what this is gonna do is automatically upload the, the measured round after, as, as it's been completed to Trimble Connect. So to use this, you do need some kind of internet connection. So if, for instance, you're using a TSC-5, you do need to have that connected to Wi-Fi or you need to have a SIM card to be able to use this. And then of course, we have our displacement tolerances. These are quite high, but we can definitely turn these down to a more reasonable level. Let's put these at there and that seems more reasonable. And now for the displacement tolerances, if as the total station is measuring, if anything is out of 30 millimeters horizontal, it's gonna flag that and let me know. So we've got our options set. Now all we need to do is start monitoring. So we go to the measure, we're gonna to connect to our, our total station. We need to give it an initial orientation, whether that's a full on resection or, or station setup or just a general bearing, you can do that. So what I'm going to do is point to my first back sight point. And it's a traverse prism and I'm going to turn on the auto lock mode. So it will automatically lock on the target as you see in the top right. And then I'm going to measure that. And we've got a position. And now on the screen, you can see I've got my orientation. And now we're ready to start monitoring. So we'll go back to the measure screen. We'll go to monitoring. And we'll look at our point list. So you can see all of the monitoring points in the back sites I have so far. So I have a three back site set up here and various types of measurements, various types of prisms and target types. Uh, and there's a variety of things I can do here. I can delete or remove any of these. For instance, if I don't need three back sites, I only need two, I can do that. And I can also add multiple monitoring points um, while I'm in the screen. For instance, I wanna add others or I can add, edit existing points. For instance, maybe the prism constant on this point is wrong. Maybe it's actually 19 millimeters. If I want, and I have existing round files, I can import a CSV of, of round measurements and that will populate the point list. I can also export this. So if I wanna use it at a future point in time, I can do that as well. One of my favorite things is there's a sort option. 
which will sort all of the points. If I click it, you'll see. It'll sort all the back sites and the foresight points in an order of azimuth. So it saves the total station time in turning to each point because it's turning to them in order. All right, now let's get into the monitoring. So we choose how many epochs we wanna measure. And in this case, I think it's probably reasonable we'll do about four or five epochs and it won't take us too long and we get some idea of how long when they're going to start and when those epochs will end and then we'll go next if i have my temperature or pressure changes at any point i can edit that and then we'll press start and you should be able to see behind me the total station is going to begin monitoring and as it's monitoring i can scroll through the list and view different information for example i can look at the backsite residuals so as it measures the backsites, it'll tell me how, how, how well that network is staying together or if there's maybe some movement in the network. So there, it's measured my three backsites. Now, now it's gonna move on to the monitoring points. So for instance, let's go and check out our list view and see what the progress is. And because I'm only doing phase one, it's only showing check marks on the phase one side. And it's almost done the first round. And then it will move on to the second round once it measures this point. One of the other things that I can look at, and probably one of the most important parts, is we can look at the deltas. So as the, 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 um, the total station is measuring the points, it's calculating the de displacement. And you can change that based on whether you want the displacement to be from the previous point or you want to be from the initial reference coordinate location. And, and in this case, it's from the initial reference. So you can see I have very, very little movement, very subtle, um, subtle changes uh, in, the, um, in the horizontal position and, no, and looks like almost no change in the elevation. So the building, the office I'm in, there's no movement, thankfully, and nothing to worry about at this moment. So let it keep collecting data. There's a variety of other things we can look at, such as the warnings menu. Here, I'm not gonna see any warnings because I don't have significant movement. But for example, if I move one of these targets, which I'm going to do now, So I've moved one of my targets, and now we're going to see the warning pop up, and it shows me that my monitoring point number two has moved significantly, and, and it shows that with the, the yellow triangle. So in most cases, you're not going to get eight centimeters of movement just like that, but it shows you how you can get real-time feedback while you're monitoring in the field. So while that finishes up monitoring the last round, I'm gonna take a look at the questions to see if any have come in so far. Doesn't look like there's any questions so far. So we'll keep going. We'll wait till this round finishes up. It looks like we're on one of the last points. So it should be done here fairly soon. Perfect. So once we've, we've finished collecting all the data, it will, Trimble Access will allow us to see all of the, the measured epochs and we can scroll through all of those. As you can see, I have a point that was out of tolerance here, and I can move through all of these different points to see how that's changed over time. Now, one of my favorite new things that we've added in Trimble Access is a, a new report um, about, about alignment-based monitoring. So you can choose different types of alignments. So in this example, I've got an RXL, but you could choose polyline, um, tunnel design or land XML. 
and then it will generate a word report file using your monitoring displacement data. So here it's just generated a report and what I've got is several scatter plots showing different movement, but it's all based on station and offset terms. So instead of looking at easting and northing coordinates, you're looking relative to the alignment and how it's moving. Obviously that point isn't moving very much, but if we scroll down, we look through some of the other ones, we can see if there's any more movement and other points and how they're moving. So for example, this point here is the one I moved. So you can see it went up to around seven centimeters that it moved here uh, in the offset relative to the positive offset, so meaning to the left of the alignment. And then the station looks like it's pretty much along the alignment, but for instance, if it was positive or negative, that means it would be positive would be moving forward along the alignment, negative would be meaning it was moving backward along the alignment. You can also create the same report, but in a CSV format if needed. Under, let me get back here to reports. There's an alignment report in CSV format as well. If you need to, um, let's say for instance, just import that into a spreadsheet or into another software. There's also a variety of other reports that, that um, can be quite useful. So there's the epoch reference report that you can create. And that shows you all of your um, displacements and epochs in an HTML format, as well as there's some other reports. Um, that would show displacement. Excellent, so we've, we've measured all of our data. The last thing that we need to do is we wanna export it to TVC. So under the data exchange menu, there's a Trimble Business Center option. And we are creating what's called a JSON file specifically for monitoring data. So I'm gonna click that, it's gonna create the JSON file. And now we're ready to go back to the office and create our reports. So I've got TBC open up here. I'm just gonna save this project. We'll call this webinar one. All right, so we've got a brand new project, no data in it. We're gonna go to our Trimble Access project and I'm gonna drag in this JSON file here. And what it's gonna do is take all of the monitoring data that we've collected and we're gonna assign it to a, a monitoring project. So it can be an existing monitoring project. For, for example, if I, if I have um, multiple sets of data I've been collecting over time into an existing project, I can put it there or I can create a new one. In this case, let's create a new project. Let's call it um, webinar October 20th. So we'll create that project. And what this will do is it, it'll first, it'll create that project in our, in our monitoring cloud, which then it will import all of the epoch, all the measurement data from Trimble Access monitoring. And we'll be able to see all of those displacements and all of that data in TBC. So it may take a few seconds, depending on how much data you have, how many rounds and so forth, um, but really drastically will save time for, for the long run because you don't have to create multiple TBC projects, do multiple syncing and, and so forth like you may have done in the past. I'm gonna check the questions while that is going. Uh, somebody asked about TBC licensing for monitoring. So the monitoring module is a module, so it's an add-on to TBC. So for, for example, maybe you're using TBC Advanced Edition, you would add on a license for the monitoring module, which would give you this little tab here at the top that says monitoring, and it would give you all the tools that would allow you to import the data like I'm doing here and then generating the reports, which I'll, I'll be showing here in a, in a moment. All right, so we imported the data. So first things first, on the left-hand side in the Project Explorer, you'll see there is a monitoring project that was automatically created. And you see that it's synchronized, so all of the data is synced to the cloud, and we have all of our monitoring points. So I can see, I believe it was monitoring point three, monitoring point one, there we go. 
Um, I can see the displacement in that monitoring point, and I can see the current thresholds and if I would want to change those thresholds. Also, in the plan view, I can see the, all the data has been imported, but it's also showing me the displacement vectors. And I can view those vectors both in plan view and in 3D view. So you can see them in, in 3D and see where is the movement occurring. So in most cases, it looks like it's horizontal movement in either one direction or an, another. So one of the new tools in TBC, if we go to the monitoring tab, looks like I'm missing my icons, but that's okay. One of the new tools is the monitoring epochs manager. So we're going to open up the monitoring epochs manager. And this tool is, is, is awesome. It, it takes all of the monitoring data that you've collected across your entire monitoring project and shows all of it to you in one nice little view. So here, if I open it up, on the top part, what you see is all of the backsite and the foresight monitoring points. And then at the bottom, you can scroll through the different time series of those points. So for example, I want to look at here. This was at 10, 10 16. I can see what the coordinates as well as the um, monitoring displacement were for those points. And I can scroll through that list. So now, Oftentimes, what will happen, maybe there was mistakes made in the field or maybe the, or some wrong information was input. It happens. We want to have the tools to be able to change some of that information. So what we're going to do, first thing, is we're going to change the reference epoch. Now, you can tell where the reference epoch is on the bottom because of the diamond symbol. So in this case, it's our first measurement. Makes sense. That's usually what it is. But let's say something happened on site. Maybe all your targets got destroyed. On, on this date and you set some new, some new targets or, or something like that and you want to set the re reference point here. So I'll simply click on this, this uh, epoch. I'll go here and I'll set as a reference epoch. And now you'll see on the bottom, I have a diamond showing me where my new reference epoch is, which is here on this date. Now, interesting thing about this is, for example, if I want to look at the displacement data, in one of the points and I go to the monitoring chart. So I'll, I'll load up the monitoring chart. You'll see all of my displacements are now set to zero at that epoch because that's our new reference. So all of the other movement is calculated relative to that. Back in the epochs manager, we, we do have some more tools for editing the data. So let's go to this epoch here. And let's go and let's say one of these measurements uh, I don't want or it was a bad measurement. What I can do is delete that. So for instance, on MP1, let's say MP1 at 1022 on, on uh, October 19th was a bad one. Let me delete that point or delete that epoch, I should say. It won't delete the point, but it'll d delete that epoch. Now, if I go to a different one and I, I generate the chart for monitoring point one, you'll see that it's removed that timestamp, which would have normally been right here. It no longer exists. So it's just another tool giving more flexibility for how you manage your monitoring data. If we go back here, we'll see that we have some other things. For instance, we can generate the monitoring report straight from this, this view. We won't do that yet, but we'll get there. One of the other things that you could do is change the timestamp. So for, exa for example, on my reference epoch, let's say I, when I first uploaded this data, maybe I made a mistake with the timestamp. I can change this by selecting the edit timestamp and I can change the date, the time. I'm just gonna move it back a few minutes in time because maybe, maybe I had actually measured that first. Press okay. And you'll notice at the bottom now that that uh, epoch is located at that correct timestamp where I want it. And that would update as well in all of our monitoring um, charts and reports. So this is, the, this is the epochs manager tool, really efficient for managing the data. Now, what we're going to get into next is we're going to, let's just close some of these so we have some space up here. Let's use the monitoring report now. So the monitoring report, 
is now a customizable command. So you can pick and choose various um, various points about it. So if one, you can choose which monitoring points you want to actually show. So for instance, maybe I only want to show my MP1, 2, and 3. I don't want to, I don't care about my back sites because I wasn't really looking for movement in those. If I want, I can also specify a time period, right? For example, I can specify a date and a specific time range for those for those points. Because I have such a small amount of, of monitoring data, it doesn't really matter here, so I'm just gonna leave this blank. And then report elements. So these are all the different elements within the report of, of showing movement in different ways. So maybe you don't need all of these different elements. Maybe you only need a few of them um, for your, your particular project. So for example, let's say I only need point charts and readings. All right, and that's all I'll get in my report. One of the other things I can do, if I go to webinar, I can choose an image for my report logo. So for instance, if you want to put your company logo or something like that, I'm just going to throw a nice little total station graphic or a theodolite graphic in here, and then we'll generate the report. And so that report will show up uh, inside of TBC once it's generated, and you'll see that it's been customized just to show this information on the right-hand side. So I'll close this so you get a little bit bigger to see. So you notice up at the right-hand side, I've got my new logo, new icon on my report, and I've got my point charts, exactly what I told the report. I've got my point charts for only monitoring point one, monitoring point two, and monitoring point three. Of course, I have my average of all those points. And then I have my readings charts as well. But I don't have all of the other information. So I, I was able to pick and choose which monitoring information I do and don't need. And so with this, if I want to take that report, I want to add it to an existing one, or I just want to provide this to the client, I can download this or I can print it in a PDF or, or whatever format and send that to the client. All right, so with that, let's switch back to the presentation. And I'm going to check, I saw a question or two come up. All right, oh, this is a great question. So can you change uh, the temperature and pressure in TVC? So, so yes, yeah, so the raw data of the total station in the job file contains temperature and pressure. So if you import that information, or you import, when you import that into TBC, you can change the, the temperature and pressure, and that will apply the, um, the EDM correction in TBC. Thank you, that's a good question. Any other questions? Let's see here. Doesn't look like there's any so far. So I'm going to keep going. Hide this panel. All right, perfect. So what we covered, just to recap, is we went through the workflow in the field where we took Trimble Axis. We, we, instead of defining a new site, we took an existing site and imported it and measured those points again. We set our tolerances and our various options. And then we measured rounds, or in, in this case, we were measuring monitoring points but in, in, in multiple rounds. And we looked at some of the options that you have as you're measuring. Then we generated the reports, the basic alignment uh, report, but some epoch reports while you're in the field. And then we exported the data to TBC. And so in TBC, we imported all of that, that, uh, that JSON file, which had all the round information. We um, did some basic management and, and editing of the monitoring data using the epoch manager. And we visualize that data in multiple ways, both in charts, reports, and, and in 3D and plan view. And then we generated a customized monitoring report with our own logo, with, our, with what information, what points we wanted to see. All right, so that concludes the demonstration. Want to finish up the webinar with some, some general notes. Um, Additional information if you're curious. So if you are a Trimble 4D control user, um, just to a friendly reminder that a new version of T4D has been available for several months, which is a version 6.2, and that involves the new Trimble, uh, sorry, T4D geotechnical edition. So if you're doing geotechnical only monitoring, 
It also has an alignment-based monitoring, reporting, and visualization feature, and a variety of other great enhancements in that version. So definitely check it out if you have it. All right, next, if you do want to find out some more information, my recommendation is going to monitoring.trimble.com. We've got a variety of things there. Of course, we've got the general product information, but one of my favorite parts is our live monitoring demo sites. So we have several live monitoring projects, and you can go on and see what that looks like, see all the different reports and charts that are being generated in real time on the website. So I definitely urge to check those out and see how, how you can automate your monitoring systems. So we do have some upcoming webinars. We do hold the monitoring webinars every month. So in November, we're looking at talking about dam monitoring, especially automated monitoring for dams, both looking at geospatial like sensors and geotechnical sensors and how all that's combined for automated dam monitoring. And then with December, we're looking at um, talking about some of the upcoming things and new version of Trimble 40 control. So stay tuned for those exciting webinars. I'll mention it again, the webinars are all being recorded. So this one is recorded as well as any other ones that we do, and they're all located on the Geospatial uh, Trimble website, which you can find at that link. And of course, we have a YouTube page, and there's tons of resources and how-to videos there for, for everything from Trimble 40 control to Trimble access and TBC and a variety of workflows. So definitely check those out. And with that, we've got quite a bit of time here for questions. So I'll take a look at what has been asked so far. Wolfgang, thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. I hope it was a great webinar for all of you. All right. Questions here. Look it up. Okay. So. So, so right now, so question about um, highlighting uh, the points that are out of tolerance in the report, um, like MP2, for example, we were talking about was out of tolerance. If I open up that report again, so uh, a question around that. So this report, it, it doesn't specifically highlight those points, but you can see just based on the axes where things are out of tolerance. So for example, um, we were talking about monitoring point two, and seeing its deltas being out, for example, it was six centimeters over here. The, there are some other options if you're looking for just specific points that are out of tolerance for reports in Trimble Access. So example, um, there's epoch reference, there's epoch compare points. There's also another word report similar to the alignment-based one, but is shown in northing and easting coordinates. So I'll show that here in one second. Did it? Maybe I missed the button. Try that one more time. Might be because I have too many word reports open. Point being, is the same. You can generate the same report uh, for standard coordinates uh, to answer your question, Kenneth. So that report would be the same, but it would be in northern eastern coordinates. So hopefully that answers it. If not, feel free to, to chime in some more. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's some more questions. Thanks, everyone. Let me get to these. So question, can you set the direction of the offset in degrees in TPC monitoring? So I might not understand the question fully, but I'll, I'll try to answer here. And if, if I don't get it right, feel free to add more information. But the uh, the direction is all in 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 um, based on uh, 2D, 1D, and 3D movement. So there there isn't an ability to get the direction at this point, but you can um, do some basic inversing in TBC to determine what the direction of that displacement is in degrees. So if you're looking for an azimuth of the movement, you can do that. But that's a good. I, I like the. I like that as a, an enhancement suggestion. So thank you for that. That's noted. Uh, Steve, you asked a question. Can the software be used 
in a situation where data is collected weekly, monthly, with independence as independent setups as opposed to active monitoring? Uh, yes, yes, you can definitely, Steve. Uh, as long as you're actually, there's no really requirement. As long as the as long as you have a the the raw data. So so exact for example, if you're doing resections and you're measuring uh, different monitoring points, they can be the same monitoring points. They could be other monitoring points. All that data can be imported into TPC, and and it can be it can be com combined as well, Steve. So if let's say you're going out every month and you import that data that that month and you do your reports and then the next month you come back you can import that data and you and you have it in context of the data that you've had from previous months as well so that was a great question steve thank you okay it doesn't look like there are any more questions at the moment but Thank you for those that, that did ask questions. They're all great questions and um, uh, even some good uh, enhancement suggestions. So always great to hear that. And thank you all for attending the webinar. I think we'll, we'll close it out for now. But as a reminder, this, the webinar, as well as the slides, will be available on the website. And you'll also receive an email with the recording so you can reference it at a later point. And uh, feel free to to uh, always uh, check out any of our Trimble monitoring information. We have a contact page. So for example, you want to reach out, you want to get some more information, or maybe you got an upcoming monitoring project um, that you want to test out and demo some of the software on, feel free to reach out on our monitoring page or reach out to your local Trimble distributor and they'd be happy to, to help you out. So with that, uh, we'll close out the webinar right on time. And thanks everyone again for attending and stay safe and we'll see you again next month in our next monitoring webinar take care